and there's six feet in the air, just just massive column of fire all the way up to the ceiling of the lab. Hey guys, it's all here, and today I want to talk about the worst chemistry teacher I ever had. Now, everybody has their terrible teacher stories, you know. You can't not with how many years you're in school and college. You're definitely going to get some bad apples in the bunch. But I think it takes it to a next level when a teacher is so bad it makes it a dangerous classroom environment multiple times. And that's the story of the worst chemistry teacher I ever had who, honest to God, almost made me quit chemistry. It's a miracle I'm still a chemistry major after this chemistry experience. So the funny part about this is this actually took place in high school. This was not a college chemistry professor, thankfully, because if they were, I would have serious questions about what I was paying for in college. But with that, let's hop into this story. So I think it's very important to get into this first class day, and yes, all this craziness starts on the very first day of class. And, you know, we do the normal things. We go through the syllabus, we talk about what we're going to learn in class, get all the paperwork, you know, the basic first day of class. We don't actually do any work. And the thing is, we finished pretty early. There was still 45 minutes left to the class period, so what this teacher, let's call Mrs. Hydrogen, or Miss H for short, what she thought was a good idea was before we had learned anything in this class, we had not gone over any safety rules, we had not gone over how to look over any equipment or how to act in the lab, she said, you know what, there's extra time in the class. I'm going to send all these students for some first-hand experience on Bunsen burners and said, here guys, go have fun lighting Bunsen burners in the lab and figuring out how Bunsen burners work. Well, this went wonderfully, as you can tell. The lesser violations of the Bunsen burner rule started with the students who managed to assemble their Bunsen burner properly, get all their hoses and all plugged into the gas lines, everything secure, and then got their striker and couldn't actually get a spark to light, and so you just had these Bunsen burners spewing gas into the room, and they would just kept trying to get sparks to light, and of course they weren't lighting their Bunsen burners, and they never turned off the gas, and so this entire time the room's just filling up with gas, and every once in a while you'd get someone who gets a spark and there'd just be a big woof as the gas around the Bunsen burner ignited. And yes, that was the lesser offenses. Uh, there were the offenses of people who would also manage to light their Bunsen burners eventually and had a little flame sitting there in the lab bench and they thought it was a good idea to look through their pencil pouch or the lab or whatever and put that Bunsen burner to good use and they would be lighting pencils and erasers and all. Just whatever they could was being lit on fire in the Bunsen burners in the back of the classroom. Where was the teacher? Um, sitting at her desk, ignoring this all, looking at clothes on Amazon, you know, the usual things you should be doing when your students are about to catch a lab on fire. Now, the worst offense I saw on this first day was someone who had opened the gas nozzle of the gas line in the back of the lab, hadn't had any hose plugged in, hadn't any had any Bunsen burner plugged in, thought it was a good idea to take the striker to the direct gas line on the end of it and go to try and light the gas line on fire. I actually saw this one, ran over and shut the gas line because I, for one, didn't want the classroom to be blown up, uh, being one of the people in it. And this whole time, Professor didn't even bat an eye, didn't know any of this was going on, didn't notice. My God, was this a dangerous classroom. Now, this might be a good time to point out she had no lab experience, no degree in science, nothing. It was simply an education degree she had and was acting as our high school's chemistry teacher. Yep. And so 
A couple weeks into class, she actually had to leave and she was gone for a couple months. I think around two months of the year, she was gone on medical leave. And this was actually the best months of the class because the substitute that was brought in was actually someone who worked in the chemistry industry, had lab experience, was a pretty great teacher and chemist. I had such a good time. I have always loved chemistry. I would look at the periodic table and elements and all for fun. I had all these science books as a kid. And so taking this class and being able to explore new topics and the fact that I had a teacher that would answer any questions I had, answer all my crazy off syllabus questions was great. I had a wonderful time. I got perfect grades on everything, but of course, Miss H had to come back eventually as she was technically the permanent teacher there. And within a week of her coming back, my grade I think dropped two letter grades down from my perfect score. And this was all done through massive projects and all. Stuff that all had subjective grading in it because she could not stand me. Uh, I think this had to do with the fact that she had no chemistry degree of her own. She hated science. I honestly think she hated teaching, and I was that super curious kid who would actually always ask questions that delved deeper into subject areas or off topic and all. Stuff she didn't know, and I think that really pushed her the wrong way. And what happened was she just had this vendetta against me and would try and make my life miserable in the class. Totally dock off points for the most ridiculous reasons, try and tank my grade in the class. and. As this class went on, more and more stuff like this happened. I think one of the most hilarious things to happen in that lab that year was me and my friend got a great idea of getting the box of the nitrile gloves and we looked at it and we looked at the sink and we were like, water balloon fight. That's right, we made water balloons out of a box of nitrile gloves and had a water balloon fight in the middle of lab. There were glassware and chemicals and all everywhere. Meanwhile, chucking water balloons at each other. Whole class got involved. It spread out into the hallway. Teacher didn't care, didn't do anything about it. It was totally fine with water being burst all over the classroom. Water balloons flying by delicate glass and all. Absolutely ridiculous. And then we'd get on later in the year where she'd just have nothing to do. She wouldn't teach us anything at all. And we'd go outside and there was a little like garden area and we'd all play around there. We had a student crawl on the roof from a nearby tree that he crawled up of, up on top of and then jumped off onto the roof of the school. We had a student try and crawl up a pipe on the side of the school and halfway up the pipe just snapped and he fell down and then one of the most notable things was we all went back inside and she totally forgot a student outside. He was just locked outside of the school, couldn't get back in, ended up going home because she just forgot he was there. Now this isn't a dangerous experience but one of the worst experiences in the class was we had all these final project things and I did mine on surface tension. I don't remember what everyone else did their project on. This was years and years ago. But as she does, she gave me a god-awful grade on this project for absolutely no reason. She cited me just not putting enough effort into it. Not that the project was bad, she said I could have put more effort into it, which was weird because I thought this project was pretty good and in line with the effort of most of the other people in the class. I really enjoyed making it and it was a fun experiment that everyone got to do. But what happened was she totally tanked my grid and I talked with everybody else in the class and they all got A's on this project, every single one of them. So I go back to her and I mention this and I mention everyone else's grades that I talked to and asked why I didn't get a good grade and she gave me all these crazy reasons and all. And later that day, in front of the whole class, she just goes, hey, you know Zal didn't think you guys deserved the grades you got. And she named specific people in the class. After, during our meeting, she had asked me who I had talked to and she named those people and said, Zal doesn't think you deserved your grades was not at all what I said. Of course they deserved their grade. I just thought my grade was low for no reason and she just said this in front of the whole class just to get at me, which was crazy, unprofessional and all. 
but you know, that's terrible. It gets real dangerous now. So you guys all must know the bubble experiment where you get soapy water and you can put gas in it and it'll all bubble up and then you can scoop up the bubbles in your hand, light them on fire, and you're just holding a little fireball in your hand till the gas burns off. Well, we decided to do that around the last week of school. We didn't have a lot else to do. All our exams and all were done. And so we decided to do this bubble experiment. Well, as we're bubbling up this big, we had this big, big gallon and gallon and gallon bucket. It was like a 10 gallon bucket that we had filled with this. And it was filled with our little bubbles of gas. And that's when she thought was a good moment to just leave the lab. So no adults in the lab, nothing. And we start lighting our hands on fire with the gas bubbles. It's really cool and all until we get one of the students who lights their hand directly above this 10 gallon bucket filled with gas bubbles, freaks out at the fire, flings the gas. I just see in slow motion an arc of this flaming ball fling across and just land directly in the bucket. There's just half a second and it goes whoosh, and there's six feet in the air. There's just massive column of fire all the way up to the ceiling of the lab and it's just raging. The sides of the bucket start melting and all. And luckily the fire put itself out pretty quickly after a few moments. Bucket was melted on the sides and we all just crane our necks upward. And the ceiling just has this big black scorch mark in the center of the ceiling. Teachers nowhere to be seen, nothing. We could have caught the school on fire. That, one student flinging that fireball into the bucket could have just burned down the school. No teacher room, nothing. Zero safety precautions, no one had goggles on, nothing. And if that isn't the pinnacle of this class, I don't know what is. That is by far the worst chemistry teacher I've ever had. It was dangerous. I hated that class. It made me really, like, it turned me off of science for a couple of years there, to the point I'm pretty surprised that I still saw that and I still loved chemistry enough to take that as my major in college, and I'm so grateful I did. I love chemistry, but, you know, kind of the moral of this is don't let one terrible teacher that you have for a year or a semester and all turn off or turn you off from something you love. And so that's by far the worst teacher experience I had. I would love to hear what terrible chemistry teacher stuff you had in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.